my name is Metsy Quarter. I'm CEO of Metsy Quarter Consulting, and I'm a behavioral profiler. I help companies with corporate culture and branding projects. I have lived in Dallas most of my life, except for four and a half years at University of Texas at Austin for my business degree. I currently live in Plano, single, no kids, just an obese cat. I worked for very large corporations for almost 20 years. Um, for five of those years, I ran a team of developers in like a technical think tank. We built custom web applications. So we spent our time taking a minute, like we would take a minute off of a process. 5,000 people are doing that process by 10 times a day. That's 50,000 minutes a day. We'd save the company. 833 hours for the employee to get their work done and get home on time for their family. So I also ran my team with that same thing in mind. Small changes that have huge impacts um, for getting them the training that they want, not just that they need, and, and building a cohesive team. And so I learned that technology wasn't my passion after all. It was the technology that was the people who were served by technology is what I was passionate about. So when I lost my team to a merger, I was like, oh, that, that was really what was driving me. I need to concentrate on the people aspects. I love helping people have breakthroughs. So that moment where you help them get over something and their eyes get a little wider and they hold their breath and you could just see the light bulb across their face, that's what I get up for in the morning. The moment that was critical for me understanding I had to change what I was doing was I turned 40, I was doing Bible study, reading about Moses being lost in the desert, judging him for it, and having this moment of epiphany of I'm in my own wilderness, I'm turning 40, if I don't do something right now, why am I judging Moses for it? So I decided that I had to concentrate on the people aspect, go back to school, get training, start over, and trust my crazy ideas. It's bizarre and weird and awesome and crazy. It's Every day it's something different, which I personally enjoy. Um, just getting started, it feels like, so I have a lot to learn, but having a lot of fun. The thing that I think is most important that a lot of teams are missing, um, and companies, frankly, culture and branding cannot be separated like they are today. The team you build creates your culture, which serves your clients, which are looking at your branding. And if those two messages don't match, then you're going to have a breakdown. So I like to help people understand that you need to brand not only your company, but help your employees brand themselves so that they can become your brand ambassadors. They can also be your culture champions. You have to run lean, and so you need employees who can help you with both parts of that, and I do that by working directly with people on what are they personally great at, um, how do you move them to action so that they're doing what they love and you're getting what you want, and moving all that together with their skills to help them find their place in the organization. The most common mistake I see is that, and it sounds simple, but it's a difficult concept that we see the world the way we are. So when someone's communicating with you, if that does not resonate with you, it's not that they're trying to be a jerk. They're interacting with you the way they would be interacted with. And so yes, sometimes, sometimes people are just being jerks, but it's not always the case. It's not always personal. I used to think if people asked me a lot of questions that I was being interrogated, but now I can look at it and say, they are getting to know me by gathering data because that's who they are. Or where if I'm talking a process out loud and I'm annoying people, why is she talking about this again? Now I can help them understand that I process by talking. I'm not trying to waste your time. I'm almost to that solution and we're going to get there. Just give me a second longer. So when you start to understand how other people communicate in addition to how you communicate, it opens up all worlds of possibilities. Well, there's the basic ones. People coming in late 
who did not previously or not coming in at all, being sick a lot, that tells you there's something pretty wrong going on. If people have been moved into the wrong job, then a great performer is suddenly looking a little lost and miss, missing their deadlines, not hitting budget. So you, you have to start looking at that individual employee. So profile the employee, profile the jobs, and then make sure those two things match. So those are just a few things to think about. My biggest life lesson would be to advocate for yourself. Find out what you're good at, be able to articulate that to the world so that you can help people know how to use the things that are weird about you that are also wonderful and become that brand advocate fast. Don't wait till you're 40, like me. Learn it early work it early and find a good place to plug yourself in so that you can have a, a life through your work that is happy. That's a difficult question to answer. Lots of entrepreneurs, uh, small business owners, uh, Whitney Shrek, Julie Edmondson, Sandra Evans, so many wonderful people that I have met during this journey. And they're refreshing and they're inspiring because just like me, they wake up every day feeling like maybe I'm crazy and they choose to trust their crazy ideas anyway and move forward. The most recent traumatic experience that has shaped my life is actually this past year. I left corporate America thinking, oh, I'm going to have this down. I'm going to take six weeks off get refueled and then I'm going to knock this business out in six months. When I left corporate America and I took the six weeks off, I had my, my body basically had shut down. I had worked myself so hard for so long that even my doctor was freaking out. So what I thought would be my, oh, six weeks off, it'll be wonderful. Well, it took that long to stop having phantom adrenaline rushes. So I've spent most of this past year getting myself in a good place so that I can move forward with my business. And I'm grateful that I left when I did because I'm still here and I may not have been if I had kept waiting to get started. Uh, a way I try to stay balanced or centered, right now I'm working on paying attention to my, my energy needs as far as you know, introvert, extrovert is a spectrum. And I'm kind of right in the middle, an ambivert, which I, I call myself a bold introvert. So I spend my time right now trying to manage that balance between people and cave time, between quiet and noise, and also for me, creativity versus task. So for example, I just got back from a road trip with girlfriends. On the last night of the trip, I had interacted as much as I could interact. They're staying up late. And I just tell them, you know, I'm, I'm out of energy. I'm going to bed early. Luckily, they understand I have strong boundaries. <laughs> and I knew that was the best choice because then the next day I was in a good place. Now, a few years ago, I would have just barreled through it. I'm going to stay up and I'm going to have fun. And then the next day we all pay for it because we're worn out. So I'm trying to find that balance in myself of how to make sure that I plan my life so that I don't wear myself out in any other direction. Well, I, I just launched a podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and Metsy.com. That has been a wonderful experience. I've got great feedback. So I have some plans for that that I want to add some things there and kind of expand that. So I'm excited about that. My other thing that I'm about to work on is branding packages. Um, I've got the culture thing pretty fleshed out for people, uh, but now I need to help people understand how important the branding can be for how you live your work life. So I'll be working on some packages and webinars and all sorts of good things. The Create Your Culture podcast is essentially me using pop culture to illustrate ideas about building your culture within your teams. Things. Uh, to take into account. Like I just did an episode on how three wake up calls for extroverts managing introverts. And I have the reverse in an earlier podcast. So I did one on more cowbell, the leadership lessons from more cowbell. So I'm trying to find humorous um, bite sized ways to help people understand these very complex brain research topics. So I'm trying to take all that complexity out for people and break it down to little bites. 
When I hear the phrase power of women, the first word that comes to mind is untapped. We spend too many years living someone else's life. I want women to know who they are, what they're good at, be able to articulate that earlier, to find out what makes them happy, what drives them to take action earlier, instead of waiting till you just kind of figure it out on your own. Because if we can learn those things and we can ar articulate and communicate better with people, that's tremendous power. And I want women to have the ability to harness the power of communication for the good of us all. I would like my legacy to be happier, healthier workplaces because not only does that help the people working those long hours together, but that will help the people they go home to at night. Mm -hmm.